Gold FM is number one here in Sigatoka. Gold FM is our favorite radio station here in Waltoka. Gold FM is number one in Nen. I love listening to Gold FM in Ba. We love listening to Gold FM only in the classic hits here in Suva. Here about Fatu Kola, you immediately think of gold. I'm Josephine Sabi and I love hearing Gold FM. Gold FM, only the classic hits. on FPC News Apollo Hospital to set up cancer facilities in Fiji. The National Federation Party promises to review Land Transport Authority if elected. And Music Awards pay tribute to some of Fiji's best entertainers. Welcome to FPC News. I'm Amrita Priyadarshini. Experts from Fiji and India have gathered in Suva to find ways to improve the health and well-being of Fijians. Prime Minister Varenge Bainimarama launched the Fiji Health for All Medical Symposium this morning, a joint project between the Fiji National University, Ministry of Health and Apollo Hospitals of India. Sharon Lata reports. This is the first time Fiji is able to engage with a major health provider in India, the Apollo Hospital Group. This initiative. We are gaining access to some of the best medical minds in India in uh, cardiac sciences, neurosciences, orthopedics, oncology, renal transplant and uh, critical care. Apollo currently operates eight major hospitals in India and another two in Bangladesh and Mauritius. The partnership with Fiji promises to deliver better health care outcomes for ordinary Fijians. Prime Minister Vorenge Bainimarama says the ability to deliver proper standards of health care and to meet the needs of ordinary people is a continuing challenge in Fiji. However, his government is trying its best to offer better service delivery. My government over the past six years has been playing catch-up game in terms of the availability of equipment, of local specialists, nurses, professional health care, uh, professional health care givers, and more importantly, and the attitude of some medical staff to their professional duties. We need a better level of sensibility shown towards patients in our hospitals. The chief executive officer of Apollo Hospitals Group, Dr. Hari Prasad, also presented a detailed plan to develop integrated cancer care services to benefit the people of Fiji and the region. Sharin Lata, FBC News. National Federation Party leader Professor Biman Prasad says the NFP is a new look party with its own set of issues and policies going into the September elections. Speaking at a meeting in Nasino this afternoon, he says many of the issues being talked about between different parties aren't the core issues of the nation. Apisalamedoka reports. The National Federation Party believes debates over the Great Council of Chiefs, land and other topics brought up by rival parties are not the real issues for Fiji going into elections. The high cost of living, high levels of unemployment, bad economic policies and poor economic performance. Professor Biman says NFP will not waste its time talking to the people about the Great Council of Chiefs or on land issues. Let's not scare people away with Issues like the GCC, the land, and other things. NFP is not doing that. And the leader of the Fiji First Party and his advisors ought to read our manifesto. They ought to read my speeches. They ought to hear what I've been saying over the last several months. The party leader has called on the people to have faith in the new look NFP. The gentleman believe in the team NFP. Believe in me. We will give immediate relief to the poor by reducing the bed from 15 to 10 percent. We will reduce duties on things like milk. The party will be naming its last batch of candidates soon. Apisolo Medoka, FBC News. Another election promise at the same meeting the National Federation Party said 
The Land Transport Authority is one of the state entities which will come under scrutiny if the NFP is elected into government. Candidate Attar Singh claims the fines levied by LTA are unjustifiable. Here's Api Salamidhaka again. Attar Singh picked on a number of government departments and services in his address. But what he made clear is that the Land Transport Authority is top on the NFP's list. Taxes and fines under LTA are out of this world, at least out of this country, because they do not reflect the income levels of our people. And some people who were responsible for bringing these regulations in the first place are also today telling you that they will remove these things. Motorists have long complained about being fined for the smallest of infringements and having to pay exorbitant amounts. Everyone is scared of LTA. If you don't wear a seatbelt, fine $80. You're drinking juice while driving, fine $20, $25. Don't have two hands on the steering, you're fine for that. Singh says the National Federation Party proposes to bring many changes if it wins in September. We will review and reduce LTA fines and fees and charges, and we will remove the road user levy. The NFP candidate claims vehicle owners and motorists are afraid of being stopped by the LTA, fearing that they will be fined without reason. Apisalomedoka, FBC News. Well, stay tuned after the break and meet the new Miss World Fiji. Richie FM is number one in Singapore. I love Richie FM, it's so hot. They came a la la, me hi hi. Thank you, thank you, Tao Kwame. Mirchi FM is hot. Here at Rugby Town, Singatoka, love re listening to Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM, it's hot. Mirchi FM is number one in Suva. It's hot. Mirchi FM, bow chulum chulum. Mirchi FM, it's hot. Welcome back to FBC News. The local music industry celebrated its best and brightest at the Fiji Music Awards last night. The gala event and the gala event was hosted at the Grand Pacific Hotel in Suva and included performances by well-known entertainers. Prime Minister Varenge Bainimarama was the chief guest and said some of our best musicians are already recording stars, having taken the Fijian musical spirit to the world. Bainimarama also recognized composers, people behind the scenes who write the songs and tunes which are turned into hit songs. The Fiji Performing Rights Association looks after more than 600 local composers and the Prime Minister says he is determined to stamp out piracy and intellectual theft that has deprived local composers of the money they deserve. Charlene Tafu Nai is Miss World Fiji 2014. The 21-year-old was crowned at the Pearl South Pacific last night. Sharin Latta reports. Charlene Tafunai beat nine other contestants to become Miss World Fiji and will represent the country at the 64th Miss World International Pageant. It's an amazing feeling. It definitely was overwhelming at first. I didn't really expect this. I didn't expect this at all. They're amazing girls here and they're all so talented and intelligent. And this is just amazing. Tafunai, who is an aircraft engineering student, also walked away with People's Choice Award and the Beach Beauty Award women here in Fiji to enter the Miss World Fiji pageant. It's a great experience. You learn so many things. You get to uh, visit extraordinary places and meet awesome people. And definitely the main cause would be the beauty of the purpose. Asena Rokotuwai was named the first runner-up and the winner of Top Model Award, while Vasiti Randekedeke was named second runner-up. As the youngest contestant, I've definitely grew a lot as an individual. I definitely want Young, uh, young individuals such as myself to enter these sort of competitions and to definitely experience what we're experiencing. It's uh, overwhelming, exciting, but um, I never expected this. But at the moment, I cannot uh, describe how I feel right now, but uh, I'm happy. The 64th Miss World International Pageant will be held in London on 14th December. 
Bafunai will compete against 130 contestants from all over the world. Sharin Lata, FBC News. Coming up in sports, FRU negotiating with sponsors to get more bonuses for National Sevens team. And Cricket Fiji, they prepare for India tour in October. Gold FM is number one here in Sigatoka. Gold FM is our favorite radio station here in Lotoka. Gold FM is number one in Nel. I love listening to Gold FM in Ba. We love listening to Gold FM. Only the classic is here in Suva. Here about Hot of Cola, you immediately think of gold. I'm Josephine Sabi and I love hearing Gold FM. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Welcome to FBC Sports. Now, it could be good news for our National Sevens players. The Fiji Rugby Union wants more bonuses for the National Sevens team. Head coach Ben Ryan confirms there are discussions with major sponsors Vodafone to change the criteria of bonus payouts after each international tournament. Josephine Navula has the juicy details. Fiji Sevens players could be walking away with more in their pockets if all goes according to plan. So far, Vodafone Fiji has only been paying bonuses only if the Fiji team reaches the semi-final stages on the IRB World 7 Series. Quarterfinals isn't good enough. We need to get to top four, top five in every tournament. So the budget and bonuses should be based upon that. The FRU wants players to be eligible for bonuses if the team wins the plate final or qualifies for any higher stage of the tournament. Ryan also hopes that sponsors are looking at the Rio Games in 2016, where Sevens Rugby will be played for the first time. Incredibly hopeful that Vodafone will also have a, an Olympic qualification bonus as well. Our coach has proposed strategic bonus payouts which players can strive for in order to improve performances and motivate the team. So, for example, if there's a particular game that we need to win or a fitness standard that needs to be met by the team, then the bonus can be given out at that point. The Fiji Sevens head coach says that it is better for them to use the money that they have rather than getting bonuses at the end of the season based on the number of games and tournaments they've played. Josephine Novula, FBC Sports. Cricket Fiji is gearing up for the Indian tour scheduled for October. The Shane Jorgensen coach side is confident the inaugural trip is just what the team needs to improve its performance. Josephine Navula again with the details. The national team fitness test has taken more meaning as the boys prepare to face some tough competition. Cricket is a religion in India. The tour is going to ask a lot of the Fiji team. Head coach Shane Jorgensen says the boys have shown impressive fitness levels compared to others he's coached. The guys here are, you know, much, you know, to be brutally honest, they're much fitter than the Bangladesh boys are. So, uh, you know, that's been really impressive. Jorgensen has found some weaknesses he's going to work on and he has a fitness program building up to the India tour. Looking at the program before, we've got 16 weeks to go until the first game in Lismore. Uh, and just before that, the Indian tour. So, uh, you know, we've, we've got time, but at the same, you know, at the same time, we've got a lot, lot of work to do in, in, a, in a reasonably short period of time. General Manager of Cricket Fiji, Inoki Lesuma, says well, the boys will benefit a lot from the tour. In cricket, there obviously is, is number one in the world right now. So it'd be good exposure for us. Um, it'd be good to experience the the grass wickets that uh, India have. The national team will begin fitness training from tomorrow for conditioning and strength. Josephine Wula, FBC Sports. And talking about improving performances, the Suva rugby team needs to improve on its weaknesses to put on a good show in the semi-final of the Skipper Cup. The team management will now analyse the performance of all their players based on the mistakes identified against Fatukola. It is highly likely the side will travel to Lawanga Park to play first place Nandronga in the first semi-final. The team knows what to expect in end stages of the competition. I think you know, we, lost, eh? we lost concentration a bit. Eh? Uh, and we had uh, indiscipline, plenty indiscipline. And we lost it. And I think, you know, 
And in the other semi final, Neta Siri will play Nandi. And just a reminder the Suva vs. Batukola game will be replayed on FPC TV at 10 20 pm tonight. Fijian swimmers failed to stamp their mark at the Commonwealth Games today. Despite finishing first in the men's 50 meters breaststroke heats, swimmer Meli Malani could not advance through to the semi final. While in the 100 meter freestyle heats, William Clark finished second behind Shaquille Fakir of Mozambique. Neither swimmers met qualifying times to progress to the final. In the women's 50 meters butterfly event, Thierry Ericito finished fourth, while Cheyenne Rover finished seventh, along with Caroline Poamau, who finished eighth in a respective heat. In the lawn ball competition, the women's force team lost to Malaysia 22-12. Well, Australia currently leads the medal tally with 18 gold, 14 silver and 19 bronze. Well, meanwhile, Fasenoc Chief Executive Lorraine Ma says all the participants are giving their best in their respective events. Try the best they can. Uh, I know that in the swimming pool, um, the, there were records broken, you know, national records broken by, by our swimmers, uh, which shows that they've, they've uh, risen to the you know to the challenge of competing against uh, better swimmers. Games will continue tonight. The next few months will be crucial for the women national sevens team as Fiji eyes a place in the next IRB seven series. Fijiana will be taking part in the qualification round, and the women will need to prove their worth against some tough opponents. Four teams out of 12 competing in the qualification rounds will make it into the IRB 7 series. A big time, you know. Uh, September is the qualifier rounds for you know the women's team if we try and, to try and get into the World Series for women. So I guess uh, starting with the development now, uh, I guess next couple of years, uh, you know, we should be bearing fruits uh, from this uh, a bunch of girls. The qualification tournament will be played from the 12th to the 13th of September at Shakip May Stadium in Hong Kong. As expected, fine weather was experienced over most places today. A trough of low pressure lies slow moving over Tuvalu and extends southeastwards over southern Cooks. Meanwhile, a high pressure over the Tasman Sea directs a cool dry south to southeast wind flow over most southwest Pacific Island countries. Looking at the temperatures, cool weather prevailed over most major centers. Savo Savo was a low of 24 degrees. However, overnight temperatures did drop much lower than that. It's good news, Monday's going to start off with fine weather over most places, except for a few cloudy periods over Suva and Savu Savu. Well, taking a look at Tuesday, fine apart from brief showers over the interior and eastern parts of the larger islands, it will be cool at night. For mariners, a strong wind warning remains in force for southwest Viti Levu, Yasawa and Mamanuda, northern Vanua Levu and northern Lao waters, the Kandavu and Vatuira passages. Forecast is for 6 p.m. tomorrow for Yasawa and Mamanuda, southwest Viti Levu, northern Vanua Levu and northern Lao waters, and Kandavu and Vatuira passages. South to southeast winds 20 to 25 knots, rough seas and moderate southerly swells. Recapping our headlines, Apollo Hospital working with local authorities to improve well-being of Fijians. The National Federation Party promises to review Land Transport Authority if elected into government. And Prime Minister Varenge Bainimarama promises to hunt down pirates and local music awards. Now onto our Fijian Speak segment. This is what some Fijians had to say today. From my 
my point of view, religious uh, should be it's independent from right from the beginning, and in politics it has no uh, no uh, like no fitting in there in politics. So it's just independent. So what I think is religion and politics is two different things. Uh, no, because they are two different uh, things. Uh, uh, religion, uh, religion will not take a part in uh, politics. Then should not involve itself in politics because it doesn't go with politics. Religion is not about politics. Okay. It's a, it's, it's a individual uh, choice. My concern is that uh, because it's a multiracial, uh, multi-religious nation, for religious to be part of politics will be contradict to some of the beliefs. And do send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fpc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page FPC News or if you're on Twitter follow and tweet us your news tips at FPC News or simply hashtag FPC News. And remember to receive the latest headlines on your mobile phone, take subspace FPC to 777, that's subspace FPC to 777. That's all from the news team for tonight. Jackie and the team will join you from tomorrow evening. I'll see you next weekend. Good evening. Richie FM is number one in Singapore. I love Richie FM. It's so hot. They came me la la, came me hi hi. Thank you, thank you, Tao Bo, me. Mirchi FM is hot. Here at Rugby Town, Singatoka, love re- listening to Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM, it's hot. Mirchi FM is number one in Suva. It's hot. Mirchi FM, bo chulum chulum. Mirchi FM, it's hot. <laughs> <laughs>